Hello there! Let's take a look at some of the performance information that Super Factory Manager gives you. I have an example here of a program that's taking quite a long time for it to execute, and if you look at what the program does, I have this barrel here with some supplies stocked, and when I take supplies out, it refills them, and if I put supplies back, it puts them back into storage. So this program is taking quite a while, and inside the storage I have many many barrels that contain all of this stuff that it's restocking it with. So if we look at how the program works, we see that we're moving stuff in and out of the storage. So here we're inputting and keeping a specific amount inside the chest, and we're outputting everything but that from the chest into the storage. So if it's one of these items, we're keeping 64, and if it's not one of those items, we're taking all of it back from the chest and putting it into storage. And then after we do that, we're taking from the storage, and we're outputting stopping after 64 of each of these items. So this program's taken quite a while, and if I wanted to see how I could diagnose what parts of this program are taking the longest, then the easiest way to do that is to just comment out some of the program. So holding control and slash will toggle the line comments for what you have selected. So if I go back here, now we'll see that we've taken a dip, so it's now taking two milliseconds instead of eight. So we can, from this, conclude that this bottom part of the program is taking the most time, which means that if we undo that and then comment out the top part, it should also uh, take less time, but not as fast as it was. So now we're at two milliseconds and then five milliseconds after we enabled the bottom one and turned off the top one, whereas with both of them enabled, it's about eight milliseconds. So now we're back to eight milliseconds-ish. And the other thing that the mod gives you is logs. So if you look at the logs and hit info, it will tell us how long each statement in the program took. So this first input statement that's moving things from the chest into the storage took very little time because the input statements don't actually do anything. It's when it gets to an output statement that it will look at the previous input statements for the work to be done. So this is effectively just adding a very small entry to a list. And then this statement is another input statement, so it's also very quick. And then the output to storage took 2.4 milliseconds. And then here we see the entire trigger took 2.57 milliseconds. And then when we get to the next trigger, there's another input statement, which is, of course is very fast, and then the output statement here, which took longer than the output statement above. So this gives a very detailed breakdown on how long each part of the program is taking. And this logs interface can give you quite a lot of information, so if something's not working in your program, then this can be used. The info log level is enough for you to get timing information. Some of the more detailed log levels give you a lot more information, so if we go to the debug, it will tell you what it's seeing inside the slots. And of course, this is a lot of information which you're better off viewing inside uh, VS Code. So for a single execution of this program, it generated 60,000 lines of logging information. So when it's tracking the storages, if we look at the top here, we'll get the diagnostic overview. So here's our program. And then here's our labels. So we have 1,009 total labels with most of them being storage and then one chest. So you can imagine that crawling through a thousand storage inventories takes quite a long time, so that could be part of the source of our issues. So inside here, the main thing to know is that the timing information for the triggers can be easily gotten by just hitting info. And the other part of that is people frequently ask, is it better to have multiple triggers versus using the forget keyword? So if we go back here, and this could instead be forget, and the program would still work the same. And it's taking the same time as well. And then the only difference is if we hit view logs here, it's going to treat everything as one trigger. So the program trigger now is eight milliseconds instead of, what was it, three plus four or whatever. So that could be one reason to choose having different triggers instead of using the forget keyword, is it could make it easier to diagnose which parts of the program are taking longest, at least until I improve the experience, because there's no reason that this couldn't be improved in the mod, but for now this is just how it is. So that's a quick overview on how to see what's going on, but you'll also notice is that this only logs one execution of the program. So when I go here and I click info, it's only doing this for the, the next time the manager ticks. And you can imagine that this becomes a problem when you have a setup where you have code that is executing uh, infrequently, so 20 ticks, next to code that's executing every tick to move power. So if I go to this program and I hit view logs, 
we only get information about the tick for the moving energy. So that part can be a complication. So the easiest way to resolve that is to just come into your program and comment out the energy part, because usually it's energy that's on a, on a different interval than the rest of your program. So if we were to come and look at the logs now, we get a lot more information about the rest of the program instead of it only reporting on the energy side of stuff. So that's of course something that I can improve as the mod author, but for now, this is just how it is. So I hope that's been a helpful quick overview on how to deal with the performance stuff. And really, the easiest thing to do is just try, if you have two things that you think one might be better than the other, just try it and see what the uh, graph on the manager tells you is faster. So that's all for now. Have a good one.